In a time for LSU football that lacked a ton of excitement, one of the most exciting players in program history, Dawn number two, and went on to become a first-round pick, spent 14 seasons in the NFL, a Louisiana native, and now back as the director of player development for LSU football. Eddie Kennison, an electric player during his time. He was also a six-time track All-American, first-team All-American during his days at LSU. T-Bob just said it out loud as he was reading a little bit on Eddie coming in. He ran a 4-2-8 at his pro day at LSU and now is uh, is helping getting the guys prepared for pro day and beyond in, in his new role at LSU, and he's joining us here on Off the Bench. Ed, good morning. How are you, man? Hey, good morning, Jordy. T-Bob, how are you this morning? Uh, doing, doing great, well, man. man. Hey, hey, if we threw you out there today and you ran a 40, what time are you clocking? Well, you know what? It's ironic you asked that because uh, I had a couple people ask me that last night. Oh. And I, if, if, if you give me about 45 minutes to an hour to stretch, which I absolutely need now, uh, I can probably uh, I could probably do a high 4-4. Four, four. Wow. Whoa. I said 4-7. Oh, I said 4-7. My bad. I didn't mean to disrespect on that, Ed. That's um, incredible, man. It, it, it could fly. You better, you better put some respect on yeah, that. I, yeah, I, look, I believe it. I believe friend. it, too. I look at, look fault, at the man. resume. I, I believe it. I still remember putting number two up when he was going back on kickoffs in Tiger Stadium. Uh, wait for him to break one. Now you're in a uh, Now you're in a role where you have a huge impact on student-athletes, and your story, Eddie, um, I, I think would resonate with so many. You you were you were academically ineligible coming out of high school. You were one of the top recruits in the country. You came to LSU. You were an All American in two sports. Then you were a first round pick and a 14 year pro. How do you take those experiences and translate them into the players that you're trying to help these days? Yeah, uh, great question, man. Thank you. And, and it's just it's exactly what you said. It's the experience. And hey, guys, this is what uh, I went through. Uh, I know what you're going through. I know what you're feeling. I know the, the pressures uh, that you're going through. Uh, I understand the demands that are being asked of you. Uh, it's a tough task. And I went through those things, guys. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really simple. This is my story. And if you stay the course and you do what's asked of you uh, from the people that are, are in the administration to help you be successful, because we have a job to uh, – it's our job to help them be successful in every area of their life, and uh, and that's just where we are. And, and we can get them to understand that, and me being in the position that I am to share my story, this is where I started, and thank God this is where I am now. Brother, it, it's just as simple as putting in the hard work. And a lot of the, the, the student athletes, I believe, uh, you know, they – they they uh, they get the message uh, from you know everyone that's hired because everyone has their best interest. But I personally think that you know they they tend to listen even more you know from someone who's actually been in their shoes uh, yeah. before. Um, Coach Ogeron has been so high on on the coaching staff in this remote process of dealing with the players, and one of the guys that he was high on was was you in dealing with the, the, the your group. I believe it's a lot of the wide receivers and the running backs on this team. Talk about the day-to-day, um, I guess, procedure on, on talking and communicating with your guys in, in dealing with the, with the COVID-19 pandemic and the limitations that you have and being able to, to reach out and touch them. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, one of those uh, situations where uh, it's just getting them to really understand the, the dynamic of change and how fast things can change in our lives and how we deal with that change in a positive way. And, uh, you know, when, when Coach O, you know, asked me to, uh, you know, come aboard, and, and I was hired on April 14th, and then I think the following Thursday, April 14th was a Saturday, and the following Thursday they started to shut everything down. So we, me being, you know, put in the mix and then having to change, you know, this dynamic of what they had in the office, it actually helped me be, uh, uh, become a better uh, director, I should say, or person for these men because now my communication level with them is uh, the dynamic uh, has shifted. Uh, now it's a, all right, guys, I'm, I'm in this, we're in this, and, and let's see how we can tackle this and make a, a positive uh, outcome or try to do our best to have a positive outcome, you know, on what's going on and what does that look like and how do we handle these day-to-day 
conversations and you now having online classes. So we're all in this together, and it's just a. Uh, it had to. Uh, I had to shift my thought process really quick to help them shift their process in a positive way. And I tell you what, right now our guys are absolutely knocking it out of the park wow. uh, with their academics, brother. I could not be, and I know Coach O and the rest of the coaching staff could not be more proud of the guys of what they're doing and how they've actually handled the COVID-19 situation. Talking to Eddie Kennison here on Off the Bench, Director of LSU Player Development, also a longtime wide receiver in the NFL. And I, I want to ask you about the wide receivers, Eddie. I, I know you weren't a part of the staff this last season, but what was it like for you watching this LSU passing attack and specifically that group featuring Jefferson, Chase, Marshall, and the rest of that crew? Oh, man, I tell you what. I, I told Coach O, and I said, I wish – Brother, back in my playing days, you know, 92 to 96, <laughs> if I had an offense like what these guys showed this year, brother, I probably would have went uh, the number one pick in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> brother, it, it was so electrifying. It was so beautiful to watch. Uh, and, man, you know, me sitting back, and obviously I wasn't on staff last year, but watching every game and just seeing how uh, how these guys worked on the field and how they gelled together so well on the field and, you know, the, and just bringing in a guy, you know, with his dynamics. And I'm going to say his name, Joe Burrow. Yeah. And, you know, you bring him in and, you know, and then everybody else just kind of, they, they understand and get the offense that these guys were in. And it was just so, so beautiful to watch. And I can tell you what, brother, I'm, I'm super excited about, you know, our young guys uh, that will be playing for the Tigers this year, hopefully. And and there's and yeah like and the wide receiver group remains loaded uh, and there's one guy who has some return potential himself. In fact, he did house one last year that I know you're close with. Um, a name that we don't always talk about a ton here, uh, Trey Palmer. What 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 can you tell us about Trey Palmer as he gets ready for next year? And like, can he be the guy that'll finally house a kickoff return again? Is he going to get that opportunity? Well. well uh, here, here's my here's my first conversation with Trey. Uh, you know, my my fourth day or third day on the job. Uh, you know, one of the first practices, I pulled Trey aside. You know, because I I watched him film on him, and then I watched him in that first practice during uh, you know warmups, doing individual drills, and then in practice, I basically pulled Trey aside. I said, Trey, uh, you don't know me that well, brother. I said, but you remind me so much of myself wow. when. I was in LSU, yeah. and I said, brother, you have an untapped potential to blow this wide receiver, uh, receiving core out of the water, uh, and, you know, not only at LSU, but in the country, huh. and, uh, you know, I saw that in, in the, you know, my third day on the job, so that was my first conversation with him, and, you know, he and I, we've had uh, uh, everyday conversations. He's one of my guys that I call every single day or text every single day, and this brother has a talent that is untapped, and we're going to try to bring everything out of him because I see it. Uh, he's a he's a wonderful young man, and uh, I can't wait to see him, you know, step into that role and fill those shoes, brother, become the player that I know that I see that he can become. He's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Whew. I'm excited. Trey Palmer. I'm excited. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> that is good stuff from Eddie Kennison right there talking about one of the electric uh, wide receivers, Trey Palmer. So, Eddie, you, you were a first-round pick, St. Louis. You played in uh, you played in Kansas City for one of the great NFL franchises. You played in Chicago, New Orleans. You've been around football your entire life. Coach Ogeron and LSU seem like they are the centerpiece of college football that everybody is interested in. The feeling you have around that program now that you're in it and working in it day in day out. Uh, God, man, I, I I'm <clears throat> I'm literally emotional. I'm. Uh, uh, you know, when when you step into greatness, okay, and I'm talking about me um, <clears throat> getting the opportunity to step back into greatness, LSU football, Coach O and the rest of the coaching staff have built something so dynamic. And I'm not just talking about football, gentlemen. I'm talking about they're building young men. And the way Coach O runs the program, it leads with character and integrity. 
And we're talking about building young men, not football players, young men. And that's something that's something I got in my interview with Coach O for this this position, character and integrity. And you know, a lot of people will say it, not a lot of people will walk it and show it. But from the very first day I stepped into the building as a hired employee of LSU football, I seen the way the staff handled these young men. I seen the way the staff carried themselves around the building for these young men and for themselves. So, brothers, when I tell you I am so honored to be a part of something that has already started greatness in building young men, and um, I couldn't be more proud of what Coach O has done and more proud of he told me something, and I've actually seen it already. So, I, I, I love the aspect, and I'm so honored to be a part of this uh, this staff, man. I cannot wait to be back in the building with everybody because yeah. the atmosphere is so, so electric, and it's so fantastic. Wow. Damn. What that, an endorsement. Dude, about that, that doesn't get you excited. We're talking to Eddie Kinnison here on Off the Bench. Uh, Eddie, doing, doing, doing some reading in the, in the run-up to the interview. Um, I have learned that you are quite the wine Smooth. connoisseur. Smooth, my man. Uh, smooth, man. I know. In every asset of life, smooth. every aspect of life. Um, me and my wife love wine. She finally just had her second child, so she's back on it. Uh, thank God, I have my drinking partner back. Give me, give me a good, give me a good red that I can bring home, and and I'll get a little, uh, you know, I'll get some love. I'll get, get, what what would you recommend? Hey, so the the first question, you know, because I get that question all the time, and the first question I have back before okay. I answer a yep. question is, uh, you know, and not digging in anybody's pocket, but what's your budget for Ooh. a everyday wine or what's your budget for a special night wine? Okay, I would say generally everyday wine, I'm looking about that 20 to 30 range if I wanted to, and then uh, yep. special get up around 100 if I, if, I wanted to, yeah, if I wanted to be nice. Okay, perfect. So uh, the, the first... Uh, uh, right, answer so. to twenty or thirty dollar bottle of wine, and this particular wine is made by the Camus family. It's not, it's not named Camus. It's named Bonanza. Oh, okay. Because I've had Camus. I've heard of it. People, people love yeah. it. So this is yeah, Bonanza. So, yeah. So it's called Bonanza, and it's made by the Camus family or the Wagner family, I should say, not the Camus family. The Wagner family who makes Camus. Okay. And Bonanza, you know, it cost you twenty four. You know, twenty four bucks, twenty five bucks, and it is. If you've had Camus wine, you will absolutely fall in love with this bonanza. She loves Camus. Uh, this is gold. Yeah, this so, is like exactly what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a hundred dollar bottle of wine. Uh, you know, I'm I'm going to brag on one of the one of my absolute most favorite people in the world is Dick Vermeil, oh. and Dick Vermeil, uh, his wines over the last three years have become. Uh, you know, 94, 95 point calves out of Napa. Coach Vermeil, he uh, he he uh, he hired uh, one of the top three winemakers in the world. His name is Thomas Rivers Brown, and uh, Coach Vermeil's it's called JLV. John Louis Vermeil uh, was his grandfather, and he named that uh, JLV after uh, after that. But the JLV uh, Dick Vermeil Cabernet Sauvignon brother. It will blow your socks off, oh. dude. I'm Eddie Kennison right in a uh, in a week that has been filled with great interviews, or a a month that has been filled with great interviews. This might be the best. Thank you so much for the information and time this morning. Uh, the LSU football team and staff is uh, man; those kids are lucky to have the uh, the influence that you're going to be uh, shedding on their life over the next couple of years. Thank you for the time this morning. Hey, you're welcome, guys. And if you have ten more seconds, I have something that yes, I just like to share with you guys. Uh, if no one for you guys uh, that uh, that are interviewing me and doing such a great job, and all of your listeners, to to you guys and everyone that's listening, if no one has told you today, let me be the first to tell you, I love you with the love of Christ, brothers, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Have a super fantastic day. Thank you for having me on. Wow. Two's up. Eddie Kennison. Two's up. Two's up all day. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, we'll close <laughs> it out right, next. Guys.